The technique of laddering down a single column of stitches to undo a mistake and then using a crochet hook to ladder back up is common practice for knitters, but fixing a column of garter stitch or seed stitch can be an unexpected challenge because of the need to create knits and pearls in that single column as you ladder your way back up. In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate two methods for correcting a column of garter stitch or seed stitch that allow you to keep your crochet hook in the live stitch at all times. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of the screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. I've got uh, two swatches here. One is garter stitch and one is seed stitch. And I have two tools here. One is a standard crochet hook and one is a double-ended crochet hook. So I'm going to start with the double-ended crochet hook and then I'm going to demonstrate with a standard crochet hook. I'm going to demonstrate first using garter stitch. Um, and the double-ended crochet hook. So the first thing we have to do is the thing that some people find very scary, which is letting a stitch off the needle. I'm going to just let it fall off the needle. I'm going to put the other stitches further down. And then I'm going to let this come out. I'm going to use my crochet hook to ladder down to my uh, mistake. I don't happen to have a mistake in here, but we can pretend that I do. And I just keep laddering down until I get to the place where I pull the mistake out. Now I like to pull out in garter stitch, I like to pull out to the point where I have a purl stitch surrounding the live loop. So you see this live stitch and you can say it has a purl necklace. It's directly around that uh, stitch. So I know that the first stitch I'm going to have to do is going to be a knit stitch. So I'm going to stick my uh, hook in there like I would for any type of, of correction using a crochet hook and I'm going to knit this first stitch. So I'm going to pull it through, bring the hook underneath and uh, pull it through that loop. So one of the important things when you are laddering up a column of stitches is making sure that you have the correct ladder rung. So I'm looking at, I'm spreading these uh, ladder rungs out to see which one is the lowest and I can see it's this one. I'm going to bring my hook underneath that for right now and then over the top of the others. This is just to isolate the strand that I do want to use from the others. And I'm going to slide my hook to the other end where there is also a hook. So again, I, I want to keep these strands I'm not using out of the way. I want you also to be able to see what I'm doing. So I have that strand that I want to pull through. And this is, again has to be a purl stitch. So I need to bring my hook underneath that strand. So that strand is in front where it needs to be in order for me to purl it. So I'm going to keep my hook pointed down as I pull that strand through and to make sure that I'm not catching a stitch below and that I'm actually capturing that strand. I'm going to, let me see if I can show you here what I'm doing. You can see that the, the stitch that's around the live stitch on the hook is right here. I'm going to use my fingernail to hold the head of that stitch down and use my other thumb to hold this strand, this ladder rung that I want to pull through. I'm going to use it to pull it up. So I'm bringing my hook so it's angled down in order to pull it through and when I pull it through I'm going to flip the hook over so that it's like this. Um, and now I am ready to work another net stitch. So again I'm finding the lowest rung on this ladder. It's right here. I bring my hook underneath it and I create the net stitch. So now I need to do a purl stitch. So again, I want to find the lowest rung. I bring my hook under there to isolate it from the others so that the hook is on top of those strands, but it's under the strand that I'm going to be pulling through. I slide my hook all the way to the end. Again, getting those other uh, ladder rungs out of the way so that I can bring my hook under this strand in order to prepare it to pull through. And as I pull it through, I'm flipping the hook over. So you may need to get these uh, 
needle tips out of the way to do that. But I've flipped it over and now I'm ready to do a knit stitch. So with a double ended crochet hook, this is, is a, a very handy tool for doing this kind of, of fix uh, because you can just always have the tool uh, in the loop and you can uh, slide it from either end so that you always have access uh, to a hook in order to pull the stitches through. So uh, that's how I fix uh, the garter stitch. And then once you're up to the top, you wanna get your needle back through that stitch. You're gonna do it from the front so that when you pull the hook out, that stitch is sitting on the needle in the correct orientation with this leg over the front closest to the tip. Now, you can see that these look a little bit larger than the other ones. You can always correct that tension. Or you can pull on the stitches a little bit. You can use a needle in between to uh, manually adjust the tension. But also, once you're finished with your project and you soak the project in water for a while and then um, let it dry, that will also help things um, as well. But if you do need to manually adjust things, you can uh, pull on uh, the running threads and the adjoining stitches to help um, uh, even out the tension if you, uh, if you need to. So now I'm going to do the same process again. I'm going to do it in seed stitch rather than in garter stitch. But again, the column that I will be correcting is exactly the same as a column of garter stitch where you're alternating a knit stitch with a purl stitch all the way up. And this time I'm going to use a single ended crochet hook, a standard crochet hook. So again, I'm going to ladder down until I get to the point where I want to uh, make my corrections. So I keep laddering down until I get to a stitch where I think I want to correct it. Now again, I am going to find my way down until I have found a, a purl stitch. And you can see right here that this is a knit stitch that's right underneath the live stitch because that purl necklace is a row below. So I'm going to once again come down until I come to a purl stitch where I can see that purl necklace. So I know that this first stitch that I'm going to work needs to be a knit stitch. I'm going to stick my hook through from front to back like this. And I, again, I'm going to isolate the ladder rungs that I don't need from the ladder rung I do need. But this time, instead of bringing my hook under to create and pulling it through to create the knit stitch, I'm going to do what I did um, with the double ended crochet hook when I was doing the purl stitches, which is to come over that strand instead of under. And I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to do the same thing where as I pull it through, I'm flipping it over. And this time you can see that the hook end is where it needs to be in order to create a purl stitch. Because when we do a purl stitch, we have to pull yarn that's in front and pull it back um, to the back. Um, but I need to get my strand ready that I need to use. So I'm gonna again find my lowest strand. I'm gonna use the blunt end of the hook to, to isolate that rung that I know is the correct one and put the shaft of the crochet hook above the others while I slide it down to where my hook is. And I'm going to bring my hook underneath that strand, just like I did when I had a double-ended crochet hook. And I'm going to pull that strand through and flip the hook over like that. So now the hook is pointing in the direction that it needs to point and to where it needs to be in order to work a knit stitch. Again, I find the lowest rung and with a single ended crochet hook, I'm going to bring my hook so that it's coming over the top of that strand when I pull it through. So I can pull it through and then flip the hook over. And I wanna bring it underneath the lowest rung so I can isolate it from the others. So once I'm at the hook end, I can bring the strand under and the hook is pointing down. It's pointing, pulling that stitch through and I flip it over and I'm ready for my knit stitch. Again, turning my hook down to pull it through that stitch.
and I do the last one again pulling it over and flipping it like this and so now I can get the stitch on the needle again by coming through the front of the stitch and releasing that stitch and so that the leading leg or the leg that is closest to the tip is the one that is over the front of the needle. Whether you need to fix mistakes that are on the needles, below the needles, in one column of stitches, or across multiple stitches, you may be interested in this playlist of videos on fixing mistakes. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.